Hi there, my name is Lucas from No Code Flow, and in this video you're going to learn how to create an interactive and CMS connected map with location pins in Webflow without using any custom code. In this case, we're going to build an interactive store locator, but with what you're going to learn today, you will be able to build any kind of interactive map in Webflow. We're going to achieve this by using Dynamic Map for Webflow by No Code Flow. With Dynamic Map App, you can build custom styled maps in Webflow without using any custom code while still keeping full design control since it's built Webflow first. For more Webflow tips and tools, subscribe to No Code Flow on YouTube or join our newsletter on our website to get the latest updates and newest components. So let's take a look at the interactive store finder we're going to build today with Dynamic Map for Webflow. By the way, this is a free clonable and you can get it from our website as well as our other pre-built maps that you can use to kickstart your project. Let's get started. We're going to build an interactive store locator for a sneaker brand called Sneaker Vault. Sneaker Vault has different types of stores that they want to show on an interactive map in London. They have stores where they sell their sneakers, apparel stores where they sell sneakers and apparel, and special pop-ups that are only um, that only exist for a limited amount of time. Let's take a look at our store locator's features. On the right side, we can see our interactive map itself with dynamically generated location pins. Each pin is linked to Webflow CMS item and comes with a bunch of interactions. On hover, I can see that the tooltip appears. When clicking on it, a pop-up will appear showing more detailed information. With this button, I can dismiss the pop-up and can again navigate the map by using my trackpad or tapping on mobile. Instead of navigating with or zooming in with my trackpad or with my mouse, I can also use the zoom in or zoom out buttons in the top right corner of the project. It's also worth highlighting that the map design itself is fully customizable since we use Mapbox as one of our map providers. In this case, we used Mapbox because we can apply a custom style that fits the more dark and yeah, laid back look of our store locator. You can also change the colors and fonts to make it more bright or vibrant or whatever kind of style you wish to, allowing you to really build a map that fits to your project. Next, we have a CMS powered list of locations on the left side. Each of the items you can see here is directly connected to a map pin. When you hover over a list item, as we can see here, the corresponding pin is highlighted on the map. Clicking a list item also triggers the active state of the location pin, as well as showing the pop-up, making it easy to find locations even when navigating through the list. We've also set up different pin types for our two pop-up stores, since we want to highlight them as a limited offer. To improve the map's usability, we've also added category filters at the top, where we can also search for our pop-ups, for apparel stores or just for usual normal stores. We can also search for specific locations, like in this case, London or a street inside of London. And we can also set a radius around the location we've set here to make finding items easier. So let's dive right into it and see how we can build a map like this in Webflow. First, we want to create the CMS collection list containing our location items. To do that, I'm heading over to the CMS option in my Webflow Designer. And as we can see, to save some time, I've already created the collection list ahead of the video. But let's take a look at the fields that are crucial to make the map work. As we can see, of course, our collection field, our collection list contains a name and a slug, which is also crucial. But the other two fields that are crucial that you need to add on your own are latitude and longitude. These two fields are essential because they determine the exact position of each pin on the map. All the other fields are nice for extra UX or some additional feature requirements you might have, but you really need to always include latitude and longitude in your collection list to make our map work. After that, you need to save the collection and to save some time, I'd always recommend to import CSV data. So after importing your elements, 
you can go back to the designer to start with the actual building process. After setting up our collection list, we can now start to create the actual map. To do that, we head over to the apps panel of Webflow and launch dynamic map for Webflow. Inside of the app, you can see the insert map button. After pressing that, we are on the first step of our creation wizard, where we can now select our collection list, which is the store locations. And we can see the most important fields, the crucial fields to make our map work are connected automatically, which is the slug, the latitude and the longitude. So now the map has been created in the background and I can start to configure it to make it work. First, I need to scroll down to my collection list and connect it to the store locations. After I've done that, I need to insert the code that we use to bind the collection fields, the collection lists fields to the map itself, which will look something like this. And after I've done that, I also need to connect the second collection list containing the pop-up and tooltip as well. And after I've done that, the map is already created. And if I now minimize this and publish our map to our Webflow domain, I can see it will already work. There we go. Still looks a bit different from our design, but we can see the functionality is kind of there already. So let's take a step back before diving into our map settings to rebuild our store locator and walk through the elements dynamic map app creates to make the map work. Once you press create map, as we did before in dynamic map app, several key elements are automatically inserted into your Webflow project. These elements ensure the map functions correctly and can be customized easily. So let's go through them one by one to give you a glimpse of how this is working. As you can see, the instructions are not crucial and can be deleted like that. We save some space, but as you saw before, if we now keep these instructions, they won't show up on the actual live site since we automatically display none of them before loading the page. After that, we have the map settings, which is a hidden container. So you can just ignore this and style around it. After that, we can see the crew and CF map filter, which contains the filter section. This is where all our filter elements will be pasted, such as our category filter and our address search field that we want to configure now. After that, we see the NCF map wrapper, which contains the list, our location list on the left side, which dynamically updates based on the CMS items. And we can also see the interactive map on the right, where our pins and interactions will take place. As of now, we can also style the loading state but in the Webflow Designer, we will never be able to see the actual design of the map. If we scroll down, we can also see the map's style guide. As we can see here, we need to add, for example, an active class to our list item to make it look different, as well as styling our pop-up and tooltip, since we show them dynamically, to style our address search, and to style our filter chip. What we can also see here is the location pin, which will also be styled here. So this is really just for styling different elements. Now let's start to customize our map using dynamic map app. First, we're going to start with the maps style itself. To change the maps look, we head over to the map settings and change the map provider from OpenStreetMap to Mapbox. Let's head over to Mapbox and create your own custom map style. In Mapbox, we need to switch to our style editor and press the new style button on the top right corner. To keep things simple, I will just start with the classic template, which is actually something that I did for our project here as well for our store locator. What I would do now is create the monochrome in the dark template variation and now press customize. 
as you can see now you have a bunch of layers but for now we're happy with this and we're going to click on the share button on the top right corner copy our star url and paste it into the mapbox star url from dynamic map app to save our changes just press save in the bottom right corner of dynamic map app now that we've set up our maps look and style we can head over to the interactions panel as we can see pop-up and tooltip are already activated so we don't need to enable that but what i'd always recommend is to turn on protect scroll on mobile since that makes it easier for your users to navigate the map on mobile devices so let's close the interactions panel and go to the filter and sorting panel in the filter and sorting tab we can add our category filter by clicking create category filter select our filtered field to be the type and decide between different filter type uis which can be filter chips or checkboxes in this case we want to have filter chips so let's add the category filter by pressing that button what we also want to have is the address search so i'm going to enable that and we want to change from the metric system to miles and add the radius of 20 miles as well right here that should be it so now we can press save and as we can see now we need to copy and insert the code again since we needed to update some fields press save and close and now we can see in the background all of our new elements will be inserted if we now close dynamic map app we can see now we have our category filter with our different filter tags as well as our address search right here as you can see all the elements that we've just inserted via dynamic map app as the filter tags our address search the item list and even the map placeholder and the map's loading state can be styled directly within Webflow, just as you would do it in any other project. But before making any style adjustments here, we need to scroll down to the style guide, which is placed right below Dynamic Maps main container. The style guide contains various elements that can only be styled directly in Webflow's designer, but within the boundaries of the style guide. We need to style these elements here since we later insert them customized via JavaScript into the live map. So that's why this feels a bit different than styling your usual elements in Webflow. If you're annoyed by this container, you can always display none it and work in your project like you're used to. That's no problem. What you shouldn't do is deleting the element because otherwise dynamic map won't work properly. What you don't have to be aware of is hiding the style guide since we automatically hide it on publish. That means if I'm now going to the published page, I can see that the style guide is not visible even though I did not delete it from my dynamic map. Now let's walk through the specifications of each element that you can style with dynamic maps style guide. Starting with the CMS list item, for the list item, we can style everything also just in the normal list item as we have it here in our collection list. What we should do down here is add an active state in case we need one. We can do that by adding the class active to our element and press save. With this combo class enabled, we can now add specific background color or whatever kind of restyling we want to do to change the list item's active state. That happens if the user clicks on the pin or on the list item. Second is the filter reset state or the empty state. Everything that is inside the crew NCF empty state can be styled and can be changed. The NCF filter reset button will work as the trigger to reset the filter interaction. Next up, we do have pop-up and tooltip. With the pop-up and tooltip, it's very similar. You can basically change up everything inside the outer container, which is the crew NCF pop-up for the pop-up and the crew NCF tooltip for the tooltip. You can, for example, connect the collection list field or change the border radius 
or whatever kind of adjustment you want to make to the element. Next up, we have the filter address search, um, which can also be done by adding the class active to the NCF address search bar. Same goes for the filter chip, which can also be styled for the active class by adding the class active behind the filter chip. And very similar to that is the location pin, which can be styled with the first hover state by adding hover, hover, and by adding the active state, in this case, by turning up the saturation on active. Everything else can be styled as you're used to right here in your Webflow designer. Once we're done styling our project in Webflow, we can go ahead and tweak our map with a few advanced features for a real smooth user experience. All right, let's get started with the hiding of elements on load. As you can see now, while loading, we're seeing a few elements that shouldn't be there. We see, for example, the suggested item for address search and the reset filter button. We do see these elements because we need to style them here and later hide them from the actual user with JavaScript. But what you can do is add an extra class to hide these elements smoothly. You just need to add the class ncf minus hide minus on minus load. You can add that to the address rage container as well as the filter reset button ncf hide on load. And then if we publish our project, we can see that no elements are appearing out of nowhere. And we can do that with all elements that we want to hide on the initial load. The second thing we want to do is to create the custom pin for our pop-up category. If you remember, for our pop-ups, we use this different location pin to highlight it against the other normal location pins being our normal Nika vault store. Going back to our project, we can see that I've created a second pin element below the first element. The pin element should contain the name or should contain the class crew ncf pin, but should also then contain a second class, a combo class called ncf and then the name of the option field and then the name of the field in the option field. All right, I will give you an example. In this case, let's take a look at the collection list. My field name is called category. And inside of my category field, I have the field pop-up. So we are filtering for the pop-up option inside my category option field. So if we're going back to the designer, we can see that I just added to the crew NCF pin, the NCF minus category minus pop-up. And then I've just replaced the background image. And to do that for the other states, I can also just duplicate it for the hover state and also duplicate it for the active state. And like that, you can create custom pins for all different category options that you want to offer. If you made it until here, thanks for your attention and thanks for watching. Now you should have everything you need to create powerful, interactive and CMS connected maps and Webflow using Dynamic Map. If you like to dig a little bit deeper and create maybe even more complex maps, visit our website for more details and check out our developer docs, which is a growing resource base for everything about Dynamic Map for Webflow. I'll link you all the important links in the video description. And if you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel or to sign up for our newsletter to support us and stay in the loop for new tutorials and new dynamic map features and more products to come.